Hello and welcome everybody. I am Professor Wool. Today we're going to be discussing how to generate a filtering policy during a micro-segmentation project. So let's recap. We have a data center, uh, a virtualized data center that has a filtering fabric in it. This filtering fabric allows us to write policy rules that determine which communication flows are allowed in the data center and which are not. And what we want to do is actually write these policy rules uh, so that the enforcement is active. To do that, we went through a discovery phase, typically traffic-based discovery. Uh, we sniffed the traffic or we sniffed uh, net flow information. We augmented that with intent information and we arrived at a repository that has all the different business applications that we've detected so far and for each business application which flows support that application uh, to allow it to function properly and this is a process that's ongoing you can see the dot 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 here indicating that we're learning application by application so we have this project going on uh, for a while and our goal from this project is to produce a policy a list of rules where for every application we see the flows that support it as rules that allow specific traffic. And importantly, in order for the micro-segmentation to mean anything, we want this policy to end with a deny rule that says from anywhere to anywhere with any service that we haven't seen before, deny. This is the rule that protects us from malware, from uh, lateral movement, etc. The difficulty here is that if we just, based on the current state of knowledge of our discovery process, just go ahead and write these rules, including the final deny rule, we're going to make many, many people angry at us because applications will stop functioning. This is risky. So I'd like to propose a twist in this process that lets us do this more gently. And the twist starts by, instead of writing a deny rule at the very end of the policy, we actually write a rule that says allow. So by default, anything that's not matched by a specific rule is actually going to be allowed by this final rule that says and anything else allow, which completely defeats the purpose. But the trick is that you write this allow rule and you indicate with a log statement you, you cause this final allow rule to generate a log for any connection that it matches. What we do by this is that all the flows that we've discovered and are necessary have their explicit rules in the policy and any connection that matches them is going to be matched by the specific rule. Connections that are matched by this temporary allow rule and generate a log, these are flows that we haven't learned yet. So either we just haven't gotten around to learning those flows or they're really malicious traffic. Either way, uh, those are the kinds of flows that hit the final allow rule. But while you're doing this, while the policy is allowing by default, you're really in a learning phase. By this I mean all the new flows that application developers require, they just work uh, because the default rule says allow. So everything just functions uh, and you're doing ongoing discovery. You keep discovering new things and you update the specific rules until the point where you've written enough rules, you've discovered enough applications that this final allow rule is not generating any more logs. Once that happens, you reach a stage where this final rule is, is quiet then you get to a very important milestone in the project, which is what I call D-Day. And D-Day stands for Deny Day. This is the day in which you, you switch the final rule from being an allow rule to a rule that says deny. Once you do that, all the traffic that you haven't discovered is really going to be denied by the filtering fabric. And why is this such a big deal? Because it, it's going to cause a big organizational change for you and all of your peers. Any application developer that needs to 
have a change in their application, that new traffic is going to cross the data center, that person is going to have to issue a change request and request permission for this new traffic so that a new rule is injected into the data center's filtering policy, otherwise that traffic is going to be blocked. This is a major change in how organizations work. When you have such a change, you need to be prepared, you need to communicate, you need to get management approval, you need to set a change control window, you need to notify everybody that this is happening. Possibly if during D-Day you need to have all hands on deck because maybe you missed something and applications will break, so you need to man those help desk phone lines. This is a major event, it's a milestone in the project. Once you've done that, you can actually say that micro-segmentation is in force and you're actually protecting your servers from lateral movement. Before you've done that, you're still at risk. So, when you're thinking about your project, think about it this way. Prepare for D-Day by putting in an allow rule and monitor that log information to discover if, you, if you've reached a stable state and you have enough information. Once you're stable, then you've reached D-Day, you let everybody know, you flip the switch, and now you're in a new mode of operation in which you are actually protected from lateral movement. Thank you for your attention.